You forgot to close your shades last night. I saw you. I saw you. I saw the both of you. I saw you. <laughs> Make sure you like this video as you are coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Child, let's talk about what I posted on the community page as far as Tisha and Kimmy. Okay. Turn it to each other. Turn it to the other. <laughs> and asking her to bring you a, a towel. <laughs> I'm going to read y'all comments to see what y'all thought about this. This is just crazy. Oh, kissing and hugging all up on each other, honey. She, I was like, look at salt and pepper. Okay, Tisha and Kimmy getting it in, honey. Yes, sister-in-laws, okay? Sister-in-laws. So one of y'all said, Kimmy was drunk. She was literally past intoxicated, inebriated publicly and on social media. Kimmy gave up her nursing career. She married a much younger man who forced her to raise his young son while putting his mother on a pedestal. Oh yeah, they said he real nice to Kiowa these days, honey. Okay, yes, not women of Brewster Place. Yes, honey, you forgot to close your shades last night. I saw ya. I saw the both of ya. <laughs> Calling to the other. <laughs> Ooh. One of y'all said, I don't mean any harm, but Kimmy looks like she goes both ways. Tisha, not so much. You know what I thought of? I thought of, and I got to go back and watch the show, but what I thought of is when Melody said that uh, Kimmy had touched on Martell or something, was real friendly with her hands with him or something, I was like, oh, that's what she talking about, because for years, people been saying that about Kimmy, even Tisha would say little stuff here and there, and I'm like, okay, where is the, look... Where is the proof? But honey, I synced it. Okay, shout out to Moses. I synced it. So another one of y'all said, I don't mean any, I don't mean any harm, but Kimmy looks like she goes both ways. Tisha, not so much. Um, another person says, keep in mind that intoxicated people become very affectionate regardless of gender or position. Who knows, but never got the impression of either one. Girl, I don't put nothing past them heifers that's in them burning houses, honey, with their husbands. They unhappy. So, look, what's the next best thing to do? Turn to each other. Okay? Look, turn to your neighbor and say, Yo, baby, you got what I need. And I say you just my sister-in-law. And I, <laughs> I know y'all like, girl, stop. <laughs> Who is that, Biz Marquis? Oh, baby, you got what I need. And you say she just a sister-in-law. You say you don't want to move in Scott Manor. It look like you want to be up in all them rooms up in Scott Manor with Tisha. Okay. Cha, mm -mm -mm. I guess uh, they was both celebrating their anniversary. I don't know what the hell they celebrating, but shit, I would be happy to be out the house if I was either one of them heifers, because we know them husbands, honey, don't care. Nothing about the marriage, honey, okay? I'm just saying, listen. Let me see what some people think about this. So, one person says, Kimmy and Tisha celebrating their sham of a marriage, marriages, and the sister-in-law sham relationship while Kimmy kissing on Tisha talking about we family I love Tisha is there any part of this show that isn't fraud besides Mel and Martell's storyline Kimmy insinuating that the show is only getting seven years out of her Kimmy to be totally honest we didn't want one year out of you or Maurice I am still trying to figure out 
beside you signing your paid for house over to a ninja and quitting your career that kept you with health insurance because we all know Maurice sure not paying for anything for you. Didn't he he the cause of her like not um getting her breast exam and stuff on time. I think that that kind of came out. Y'all put it in the comments because I did forget and it was a while ago, but it was something like that that went down, child. I wasn't shocked. What did you actually bring to the table? Kiowa was much more entertaining than you. She talked about her own life. You was in everybody's business but your own goodbye. Please bring Dr. Shanita Foster on the show and make Sonny a full-time cast member. We all ready. We all are ready for the Scots to go. So one person says, I used to love Kimmy, but her being two-faced makes me beyond ambivalent towards her. She is good with everyone on one-on-one -on -one situations, then flips the script when she's around Tisha or Destiny. She needs to keep the energy the same no matter what and who's around. I will say that. I do kind of notice that with Kimmy, too. Okay? I do kind of notice that. Mel and Martell are the only people that's keeping the show going because they won't check horse face Kimmy her background they won't go into her husband's background i don't know why they won't dig deep enough on tisha and her husband's marriage because i'm sure there's a lot going on in those men's background lives Ooh, child they don't even talk about kimmy's husband being arrested for the dui that's the storyline right there they are going to talk about that. Didn't I see some previews to that, you guys? Put it in the comments, because this person kind of confused me. I thought I saw some previews. Going to court, stuff like that. And then I heard someone over there was Scott, honey, Marceau, and Tisha. They still older people, honey. Yes, Lord, that's what the people say, honey. In other news, honey, they trying to say, um, Ariane and Martell and when they got married, honey. Okay, I was married now. Going to the chapel and we're gonna get married. Gee, I really love you and we're gonna get married. Going to the chapel of love. Well, it won't be no love. It'll be, you know, just him letting her out her cage for, you know, for a few minutes, honey. Okay? <laughs> letting her up off that bench. Okay, child, I don't believe these people is more married than the man on the moon, honey. These people are not married. And if he did marry her, it would only, you know, be the have her ass on the show in some type of way. Okay? That's all he would try to do is put her ass on that damn show. Let's see what some people think about this. She's the only person who will marry him. Nobody cares, child. They are equally yoked and deserve each other. We see each other. Yeah, they deserve each other down to the first floor. Okay, only on the first floor. If they got married, it's so Ariane won't testify against Martell. Somebody said Mar-Hell. Not Mar-Hell. <laughs> Y'all be cracking me up. He was found guilty already and she can still be charged. He just won't be able to testify against her. So another person says spousal immunity doesn't cover crimes that occur before the marriage. He should have married the bird years ago when Melody left him. He was planning to release the revenge pee. Child, he don't want that woman. I don't think he want her. I don't I think her value went away um when Melody left him. I really I feel like it's like that for side chicks. Y'all put in the comments. How do y'all feel? I really do be feeling like that. Like, that is the purpose of a side chick. And as soon as the wife leave these men, you know, they don't want the side chick no more. The thrill is gone. 
Okay, so let's look at this little article I was looking at. It says, it's by your tango. It says, 10 painfully realistic reasons men won't leave wives for their mistresses. Why a mistress will likely never become the wife. Um, okay. So, it says, if you're in a situation and are a married man's mistress, you need to be aware of the reasons why men will never leave their wives or their mistresses. Even after years of adultery, statistics show that the vast majority of cheating men end up staying with their wives and drop their mistresses once they are caught in the act. You should not think, not for a second, that you will be the exception to the rule. Here's why he won't leave her for you. Number one, men who cheat enjoy the idea of a mistress rather than a wife, but they don't usually respect them. He may like you, but the fact is that men who go out to cheat often already have made the decision that he's not going to upgrade you to wife status. Once that decision is made, it's set in stone. The reason why men will never leave their wives is simple. Whether he admits it or not, a cheating man does not respect his mistress. Remember, he called her a concubine. What was it? What was it, guys? Peasant. That's what he called her. Yeah, he said she she was a peasant. Okay. Two, a cheater realizes it's better to have that solid foundation than to try to venture into the unknown. He knows that his wife can deliver, and it's a higher standard of living. A divorce, a breakup, and a foray with a woman who might not live up to his expectations during reality mode might not be something he'd be willing to undertake. Yeah, that's why he wanted... um. Melody to stay and get comfortable with him cheating, okay? That's what he wanted. He wanted her to get used to that. Go talk to the other women. They'll tell you that this is just what men do. I'm just being a man, okay? After all, the cost of things falling through with you will be twice as high as the cost of you as the cost of just divorcing his wife alone. Three, marriage comes with legal issues that will make most men immediately think twice. It's not so easy to walk away from a relationship with someone you're legally married to. This is true even among people who detest their spouses. Most men do not want to deal with the red tape of law, nor do they want to deal with all the legal penalties that come with divorce. So they'll stay even if they hate their wives, okay? It's cheaper to keep her. Why y'all think Marceau ain't went nowhere? Didn't somebody tell him to just stay with Tisha for the kids even if he ain't happy? Another reason, number four, additionally, there's also the issue of personal finance. Divorce is brutal on one's wallet. In a lot of cases, it can lead to a man or a woman losing 50% or more of what they own. Unsurprisingly, a lot of men won't divorce their wives because of the financial hit they would take. Yep. And they don't want to, they don't want to pay that cost. A lot of them do, though, you know, stupid. Number five, there's the issue of potentially losing his kids. I'm assuming a lot of men like their kids. Shit, they don't want to be bothered with them. Divorce means that they will likely end up seeing less of their kids, regardless of what they do. If their kids find out that daddy cheated on mommy, it's also very possible that they won't want anything to do with him. Parents will understand why this isn't a price many dads are willing to pay. Six, he has a public image to worry about. Nothing quite says scumbag like a man who leaves his wife or his mistress. Cheaters are aware of this and the stigma that comes with it. Most of them don't want to face that since they are cowards and this will have long-term consequences. 
7. Even if he would logically want to leave, there's also a matter of a sunk cost fallacy to think about. Sometimes it's just the fact that he's been with the wife for so long and invested so much into being with her in economics. This is called the sunk cost fallacy, and it states that people tend to stay with decisions that they've already invested in. If he feels heavily invested, he will be way less likely to leave. And really, what's a bigger investment than marriage? Yeah. Gotta, gotta look at that. Okay, let's get to sign uh, number nine. Okay, not sign, but one of the reasons why men won't leave their wives, honey. Okay, so it says there's also the fact that a lot of guys realize that the time they spend with their mistresses is often just fantasy time. You're his mistress. You don't see him when he has diarrhea. You don't see him when he's getting allergic reactions. He doesn't see you when you're shaving your legs or when your period has gotten out of control. In most cases, the time you spend is when both of you are on your A game. You can't keep that up 24 seven and all the allure that you have compared to his wife will fade once things get serious many men realize this and will keep you at a distance because of it oh child that was good okay number 10 Lastly, it's because he already has had his cake and wants to eat it too. This is what it boils down to. He's got what he wants on all corners. Why would he change it? Moreover, why would he want to change it? He's got it made and he knows it. For him, there's no reason to leave or change the setup he's gotten, so he won't. And why buy the cow when you can, you know, get the milk for free? When you could just put a baby up in her. You could date her whenever the hell you want to there is you know like coleslaw has hustled backwards there's no standards there's no morals values boundaries decorum ethics there's nothing that martel has to live by this is um how the narcissist wants you to be okay open and available to them whenever you know they want you and she the only ding dong that's, you know, stayed around this long, okay? Now, honey, listen, let's get to uh Tamar. Tamar and that man, honey, JR. What do y'all think of this? This is just sad, okay? It, it's, just, it's just really sad at this point. It's just like Tamar, girl, girl, let him go. Shit, you should just keep dating these niggas if you go, you know, keep be going through this with jr shit he one of the niggas at this point okay y'all women y'all be thinking that you you go have a different experience because you dating you dating white so you think you dating right but honey the devil is a lie in jr's case because that is a that's a that's a ninja honey okay y'all know it is so let's see what some people think about this um Okay, so first off, we got Tamar. She's basically clearing up why she exposed her fiance, Jeremy Robinson, honey. Why he got to have my last name? What's up with that? Okay, and both of them was down to the social media. It's like, what happened to things being private in your relationship? And before I read these comments, Tamar, I'm here to tell you, that man don't want you, sis. He don't want you. He don't. He he cannot want you. You know, he wouldn't have been talking like that. We just friends and uh-uh. Nope, 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 nope. Soon as that came out of his mouth and then he wants you a part of his birthday and y'all just friends. Like, y'all just need to be separate. And then you going around saying he your husband and did y'all really get married? Are they really married? I wouldn't have did it. Okay, so one person says, why the entire hell does he have access to any of her financials? That surely wasn't the first time he attacked her mental health. He shouldn't be dating her anyways. Tamar is not mentally stable. <laughs> She's not. 
So why would you get with her and expect her to be something that she's not? She just, she not that girl for that. Stability and Tamar, they don't go in the same sentence. You dealing with somebody ghetto, you know, ghetto, a little bit hood, all over the place, reactionary, dramatic, drama filled, okay, aggressive, outspoken. You see how she be talking to her sisters. And you thought she was going to get some different treatment, JR? Okay, so the person goes on to say that surely wasn't the first time he attacked her mental health. Okay, I already said that. Tamar ain't a victim at this point. She's a volunteer. Absolutely, yes, yeah, she is. She's a volunteer because anytime you're in a relationship with somebody, you guys, and y'all got to keep breaking up, getting back together. I didn't been there. It's unhealthy and it's time to let it go. Okay. It is time to let it go. Let it go, baby. What Teddy P say looks like another love TKO. Okay. Let it go, Elsa. Okay. Now the person says this man continues to lead her on no matter what his mouth says. She's so messed up that she can't see straight. They both need help immediately because he never stopped her when she called him her husband either. Clown emojis. Yeah, like if you're not her husband, tell her that. And like, I just, I don't get it. It's, it's, what it's giving is... This man don't want me and I am willing to hold on to him and look like a fool and be embarrassed every couple of months or hell now is every couple of weeks shit. Okay. <laughs> it ain't got look, honey, it it didn't got like a real routine with y'all. I already be knowing like by next week it'll be something else. And honey, I don't know why we're making a big fuss over this because we know Tamar will run right back. They are giving Cardi B an offset. Okay, the interracial version. Well, they kind of interracial too, but you know. That is just giving Cardi B an offset, honey. And I ain't got time for this. I ain't got time. He trying to come off like he's so mature and he's so together. And, and then it was some people, and it's funny because I actually liked them together when they was on the show and everything. I liked them together at first, but now it's just, it is just too much. He's not good for her if he gonna keep leading her on, if he don't really want her. And men will do that each and every time to the women. You know, they know that they don't want you, but they'll keep sleeping with you. They'll keep eating with you. They'll keep trying to, you know, partially live with you. They will keep doing all of these things. Okay. So we're just learning they got married, which explains how he was able to use her card. If they didn't cut ties completely, then it makes sense. But this situation is a lot. In that interview, he always stated, I loved her. He never claimed her. I'm not mad at him. They broke up. He shouldn't have access to her money. Yeah, because Tamar said, honey, he was up at the four seasons trying to, you know, purchase a room with her credit card. Yeah, so if y'all are married, then that's probably why he got access like that. But Tamar gave me the impression that she would, she would allow him, whether they married or not. Yeah, girl, bye. Okay, she would allow that man to have access to her money anyways. They need to completely break up on all levels. No romance, friendships. She wants him, but he doesn't want her anymore. Point blank and period. Yeah, Tamar, that man don't want you. He was just, whenever a person says, we'll see how this goes, or we're friends, and they say it over and over again, they don't want you, sis. They don't want you. They just, you know, they there. He probably want to be up in your friend circles. He didn't got him a little interview on Carlos King. This is just way too much. Way to ghetto for me. Way to ghetto. Tema's very ghetto. Very ghetto. 
Tamar is exhausting. She is such a child. Grown women do not go on social media to air out their business or that of others. It's seriously sad at this point. This lady is almost 50 years old. Yeah. And she acts like a spoiled brat child. It is crazy. It is, it's, it's just... It's just sad, you know, because Tamar is a beautiful woman, very talented, very talented, and but she doesn't know her own worth. And Tamar, you need to stay single, stay by yourself. Once you learn to stay by yourself and love on yourself, I think dating will get a lot easier. You know, it it will. It will. It get a lot easier. Once you love yourself, you won't be desperate to just put up with anything. And that's kind of what it looks like you're doing. And I think she's like in a competition with her sisters because ain't one of them, what, Trina married. That ain't nothing to brag about. That marriage is, look, going down the wrong road, the wrong road. What's the other? Tawanda, it don't look like her relationship going nowhere. And that man, he gained a lot of damn weight. He used to be cute to me. He ain't all that cute no more. Um, They make a cute couple, though. But it don't seem like he into, like, marrying her. I don't know what's going on with the Braxton women's and their relationships and marriages. Tony and Birdman, what if they never got married? Um, after telling the people a million times they was getting married, like, I don't know what is up with them Braxton sisters and these relationships, okay? But it look like, uh, Tamar needs an intervention. She do. Oh, let me talk to y'all about basketball wives real quick, because I didn't caught the last few episodes. Honey, why it look like the FBI... They about to be after Jennifer's fiance, honey. They may not be getting married after all. Um, Like, Jennifer, girl, you another one. You need to learn to be by yourself because this man right here is not it. You know, and they look cute together and, you know, you want Jennifer to be happy, but all these people coming out that he allegedly scammed, honey, that don't look good. Let's get to Brooke. Uh, Brooke, what is wrong with you? Why are you, you and Evelyn, y'all are so damn controlling on the show. Did y'all hear what Brooke said to the Cheyenne lady? You unmarried, you ain't never had no kid. Girl, that ain't no read. Some of these women don't want to ever get married. Look at you. You done got married and you done had to get a divorce because he done cheated. And then this new man, he didn't play your ass to the left. He stopped showing up to different events you you would invite him to. Then you get mad at Brandy and, and have a whole attitude with her. She trying to greet you and you all up in your feelings because of what Evelyn ass told you. Evelyn acts like you are her damn puppet. And you act like it, Brooke. You are so up Evelyn's ass. Did y'all see when they kissed and Evelyn was leaning all in? I was like, ooh, child. That's why Evelyn can't keep no man. She want a woman, honey. She want Miss Brooke. Y'all might as well get together, honey. Get together, honey, because it don't look like it's working out, uh, Brooke, with you and the men's and Evelyn. It ain't never worked out with you. Because like I said, I think you got some superficial ways about you and the men catch on and then they don't want to be faithful and this, that, and the third child. And it goes on and on. But that shit was crazy. Did y'all see how Evelyn invited Jackie to Mexico and all the girls got all upset? They was like, bitch, you the main one that put a battery in our back and tried to divide and conquer the group like she always do, right? And so, I guess Shawnee told Evelyn, you know, give Jackie a chance. We all know why uh, Shawnee told Evelyn to give Jackie a chance. Because she knows damn well they don't have a show without Jackie. (laughs) That's why. (laughs) That's why she wanted uh, Evelyn to go ahead and give Jackie a chance. But they, you know, they on better terms now, her and Evelyn, for now, right? 
Jennifer then brought Laura back to the show. What do y'all think about that? Do y'all feel like Laura's good for the show? Laura and Jackie together, that shit about to be crazy. They about to bring up Laura messing with Shaq. That's going to play out on the season finale. Yes, honey, Miss Robinson will be talking about all of it. Listen. But yeah, that Evelyn is a nasty piece of work. I like her dresses that she has. She's coming out with a maxi line and I think now she done canceled it. It's like her second or third time canceling, coming out with this damn line. Because many years ago, she wanted to do a maxi dress line. Evelyn used to have some of the best maxis, her and Jennifer back in the day. Her little body suits, she say they doing good. I like her little body suits. I know a lot of people don't like them. But I like Evelyn as a businesswoman. I will give her that. She does have a lot of style. But she ain't on Jennifer's level, honey. Okay, that damn Jennifer, honey, just a beast with them labels, honey. But yeah, like, and and Evelyn, girl, you know Jennifer's man ain't no good. Now, this is the time you should be all up in her ass. Like, girl, you sure you want to marry this nigga? I think she probably trying to stay out of her business. But this is when you should be, like, all up in her business. You claim you love her, right? But Evelyn and uh, Jen, they ended up hugging and stuff and because they, they celebrated Jennifer with a bachelorette party. But, um, yeah, I was just so taken aback by Evelyn and how she did those women, you know, trying to turn them all against Jackie, got mad at Brandy because Brandy would invite Jackie around. Brandy and Jackie have recently made up. Jackie apologized. Um, Jackie had ended up telling Evelyn, I thought I was venting to a friend. And then she ended up making up with Jennifer too. Cause Jennifer like, how did my news get brought up in it? And Jackie was like, oh, I was looking them up. And then I sent them to her. Like, is this what you're talking about? And so y'all know how that go. Jackie conveniently, honey, got out of that. I was laughing. But yeah, they they have the same plot line for this show where everybody is against Jackie. Now everybody they made up with Jackie because of the ring leader, Evelyn. I'm so sick of y'all running up behind her ass. Okay, shout out to, what's her name, Giselle? Because she actually held Evelyn accountable like, damn, bitch, you want us to be buddy-buddy with her and you was the main one that hated her and now you all up her ass and you expect for us to just follow behind and... Evelyn had told all the uh told Jackie that you know the girls wasn't feeling her bringing her on the trip and them bonding and making up and all of that but Evelyn was like listen I felt like you were being sincere you were being genuine I felt like you know you really want to move forward and Jackie brought that damn Cheyenne with her a whole nether mess Okay, but yeah, when I heard Brooke say that to Cheyenne, I'm like, girl, that is not a read. But you ain't never been married. You ain't had no kid. These women are traveling, living their best lives without children. Some of them, you know, they happy, they not married. That type of shit is not a read. It's not the 1950s no more. I promise it's not. It's, that did not land. What is wrong with Brooke? I feel like... And Brooke, Brandy was right about you. Brandy was right to tell your ass that you was moving way too fast. Because you was. Well, I just feel like you can't, you know, you just can't accept the fact that I'm happy. She accepts the fact that you're happy, but slow down. And guess what? Brandy ended up being right because now you're on break from that guy because you was moving too damn fast. You're trying to move up out of your grief so that you could be happy. Then you took some personal shots at Brandy. Everybody keep trying to throw Jason in Brandy's face. Her husband, I ain't gonna lie though, he fine as hell. He is. Him and Brandy look good together, but fine as hell. Okay, but I don't like no cheater. I don't, I don't like that shit. There is no reason to cheat and you married and shit. It's disgusting to me. But Brandy ends up telling Jason that they are weaponizing that. And, you know, he said he feel bad that, you know, the girls is using that. None of them should be using that against Brandy when all they niggas cheated. Antoine and cheated on Evelyn. Chad Ochocinco, who the other baby daddy? Baby daddy. Who your baby daddy? He right here. 
<laughs> Melody and Wanda. Um, Carl. Carl Crawford cheated on Evelyn. Evelyn, you actually had a good man, but you didn't want him. I didn't. I don't think he was cool enough for you. That's how I am convinced that some people they really don't want love. And don't get me wrong, you you either vibing with somebody or you not. But how did you end up being that man fiance just for you to break up with him? What type of shit is that? Was you really trying to live happily ever after? No, you was just doing TV. It looked like Tamar was just doing TV. All of y'all. But yeah, I was just like, I'm like, Evelyn, you can't be throwing, but Evelyn did have a point though, okay? Because it really hurt Brandy because Brandy, um, you know, she's still with Jason, but Evelyn looked like she struck a nerve when Evelyn said, yeah, you're not even happy with Jason. You know, I could just tell and, you know, it just seemed like, you know, you don't know how to be by yourself. She said, I'm paraphrasing. She said something like that. And I feel like that, that, that hurt Brandy because part of that is true. I don't feel like she all in love with Jason. I feel like she's giving him chance after chance. Cause it's kind of like she's trauma bonded to him because of the cancer and, you know, a lot of the health issues she was having and then they have a baby together. So I, I feel like, and he probably always financially took care of her. So, you know, that's another reason why, you know, women stay with a cheating man. You know, most of the other women have left. Shawnee, Evelyn, Tammy, all of them have been cheated on. But she the only one, you know, she didn't stood by her man. Y'all hear when Jackie told her, girl, we the real basketball wives. I said, look at Jackie, always throwing that damn man, honey. And somebody face. <laughs> I bet Doug, though, he don't even be spending time with Jackie crazy ass like that. Okay, Jackie got that man on a leash, though. <laughs> Crazy. You all remember when Doug met up with Malaysia <laughs> and Jackie was waiting outside crying and going off and acting a whole mess, right? I like Jackie, though. I fuck with Jackie. I do. I don't agree with all that shit with Takari and that part of Jackie disgusts me, but other than that, I like Jackie for this show, because she don't give a fuck, she gonna tell these bitches straight up what it is, I like what she told Laura, she was like, I said what I said to Brooke, because she said some hurtful stuff, um, I thought it was funny when Laura told Brooke, uh, you haven't changed, you know, you still on that same shit, and they start laughing, I thought that that was funny, yeah, but what y'all think about Laura coming back, what if that sister came back, now that would be good, Gloria, y'all remember Jennifer, Evelyn, and Shawnee, they used to try to, uh, bully Gloria, but yeah, it's coming, honey, it's coming, they go, they go be, uh, getting on Laura, because of that stuff with Shaq, watch, Mm-hmm. Because they said she was the reason that they ended up getting the divorce. She wasn't a reason. She was one of the re That man was cheating on Shawnee with everybody. I read Shawnee's book, okay, on Audible. Yes, from her. I heard it from her that that man had cheated on her. So, yeah, what do y'all think about that? But Evelyn, girl, you stupid. You dumb. You are. I, just, I don't like how controlling she is with the girls. Yeah, I want y'all to hurry up and forgive Jackie, and I want y'all to be so mad at Jackie, and, and just all in your... Like, you want to control everything. You know, and I like that Giselle and um, Brooke, they was kind of calling her out like, damn, you like, you act like you so much better than us. You know, but she do. She thinks she better than y'all. She think because she an OG, you know, y'all go, she could snap her fingers. Y'all go do what she uh, tell y'all to do and y'all do it. So there is that. But yeah, what did y'all think of that? All right, you guys. I will talk to you all in the next video.